All right, good morning. Uh, I do apologize that I'm not here today. Um, my daughter is actually home with uh, fever today. Um, so I hate to miss uh, this early of, uh, in the school year, uh, but we are going to do our best to move forward. Um, so just a reminder what our beginning of class routine is. So hopefully when you came in, you picked up your notebooks on the front table. Um, and take a moment to make sure your phones and earbuds are put away and then have a calculator on your desk. Now, uh, you are gonna need a calculator today. Uh, if you don't have one, when we get to that point, I'll talk to you about what you can do. Um, but that will be our usual beginning of class routine. And then, like I said, starting on Thursday, um, we'll start silent reading at the beginning of the period. But I wanted to give you a chance to, uh, to be able to go to the library and pick out a book before we do that. Uh, today, what I want to do is, uh, again, just as we've been doing, go over what classroom expectations are, um, finish the notes we were taking on Friday, um, take some notes on a new concept called distance and displacement, and then the bulk of the time, these are going to go by pretty quickly, and the bulk of the time, your time today will be working and practicing with some new concepts. Uh, a few announcements to make sure to get out of the way. Uh, on Thursday, we are going to the library to pick out reading books. And like I said, after that, we will start every day of class with 10 minutes of reading and having a reading book is going to be required material after that point. If you already have a book at home that you would like to read, uh, please feel free to bring it in and you can read that one instead. So after today, the required materials you need to have with you every day in class are a scientific calculator, your notebook, although your notebook actually stays in class. Um, so your notebook, uh, reading book, laptop, computer charger and your agenda. Okay, so let's get started. So let's remind ourselves what the classroom expectations are. So first, we've got the required materials, which I just went over. Uh, let's wait for it to load here. I've got the required materials, which I already went over. We've got the fact that you really need to take care of restroom breaks outside of class in the rare opportunity, in the rare case that you would need to do it in class. You have to use your own agenda. Be in the classroom by the time the bell rings. We're going to start with silent reading, and silent reading time is for silent reading and not for doing work for other class or being on your phones or anything like that. Quietly listen to the speaker. Keep phones and earbuds put away. Uh, remember, if I see a phone or earbuds, I'm going to put it in a paper bag, staple it up, and leave it with you on your desk. Um, I'll only write detentions if uh, you don't comply with that or you get it out before the end of the period. When you are finished with your work, you may read your book. We're gonna stay engaged in working until the three minute alarm goes off. And when the problems get difficult, we're gonna show some perseverance. All right. Let's go ahead and switch over to some notes. So go ahead and get out your notebook. Um, and I don't have my notebook here at home. So uh, let's see here, can I get rid of the share here? Um, I don't have my notebook here at home, so I'm going to do my next best thing, um, which is I'm going to make a notebook because <laughs> uh, I want your I want it to be clear what it is you need in your notebook. Um, so the first page, as you recall, if you were here on Friday, you've already done this, um, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So we on Friday, the first thing we did was we number of the pages in our notebook. So I'm going to read page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Um, and then I don't know if you can see that, but I numbered the corner of all the pages. Uh, the first page of your notebook was table of contents. And we have what we talked about on Friday, which was um, what is physics. And we put that on page three. And then I'm going to go to the next full page, which is actually page five. And today we're going to take notes on distance and displacement. So you should already have page three complete. Um, but if you don't have page three complete, just leave um, leave that. Uh, you can call this what we call this. What is physics? Should be the title of, of page three. Um, and if you were, weren't here on Friday, um, for whatever reason, just label that page and then I'll talk to you about what to fill in there. Um, when I get back, 
and then today, which we're on now on page five, which should be the, the, the front of the next page. On page five, we're going to take notes on distance versus displacement. All right. Here's the idea of uh, distance versus displacement. Um, so the idea is we have to be careful in physics. Now let's talk for a little bit about what we said physics was. Remember we said it was the most basic science, it talks about things such as motion. Um, so we're gonna start by talking about motion. And the first thing we're gonna talk about, I do apologize, I've got um, kind of a janky setup here. <laughs> so you're gonna to have to uh, bear with me on uh, how I've got my document camera working here. Um, but anyway, um, the most basic thing we can measure when we're talking about motion is the idea of distance and displacement. And to articulate what the difference is, I want to I want to draw something out for you. Imagine that you start somewhere and you walk. Let's say that you walk um, four meters forward, and then you turn around and you walk one meter back. You really can't see that, can you? Any better? That's worse. All right, so let's say, so I've got two arrows here. I got one going forward four meters, one going back one meter. All right, now the question is how far did you travel? Well, you might think about this, and if you look at it, there are, this is um, what I might call an ambiguous question. If something is ambiguous, it means that it, there, there's maybe more than one right answer. For example, you might look at this and you might say, oh, that's easy, we traveled five meters because four plus one is five. Or an equally valid way of going about this would be saying, no, it's not five, you went four meters forward and one meter back. So you're only three meters away from where you started. And so we might say that that distance was three meters. Now, both of these answers can be correct depending upon what we're talking about. And so that's what I wanna talk about. That one of these answers gives you the answer for distance. The other one gives you the answer for displacement. So I'm gonna give you a couple definitions here uh, to add to your notes. First one is the... Um, the definition of distance. So distance is going to be the total amount traveled. Sorry, I can't see that. Let me see here. The total amount traveled regardless of direction. So, what, so let's think about this. What is the distance, right? The distance is overall, regardless of what direction I traveled, I would have traveled four meters and then one meters. So five meters is the distance that I traveled. Try and make sure you can see that. That says uh, the total amount traveled regardless of direction. I know that's hard to see. This. All right, now, the second thing we're going to define is displacement. I'm going to give you two definitions. One definition is more scientifically correct, but it's hard to understand. And then there's a second uh, definition that I think is easier to understand. Um, so the first definition is the total change in position. I'm going to give you another definition. So I'm going to say slash. So this place we zero the total change of position or how far an object is from its starting point. Okay. 
So in this case, right, I traveled four meters this way and one meter that way. So how far am I from the starting point? I'm only three meters. So this is gonna be what we call the displacement. All right, now make sure that your notes page has all of this information in it. Remember, it's important to have your notes page, uh, your notes in your notebook. Um, and you're, you're going to uh, be turning this notebook back in at the end of the period, but I'm gonna let you use the notebook on the test. So it's important that you have this information because once we finally get to the test, um, you're gonna wanna be able to look back at it. I'm gonna ask the sub now to pause for a moment and to hand out, so just pause the video and then hand out these distance versus displacement worksheets that are on the desk. All right, so let's now talk about how to do this. So, the first problem I've got here, oh, um, and I'm gonna also pause for a second, I'm gonna say this, you're going to want a calculator um, to, to do this. Um, if you do not have a calculator today, um, I, have, I do have some on the front desk that you may borrow, but here's what I ask you to do. I ask you to take, uh, to give the sub either uh, a, um, your your student ID or a uh, or your agenda or something valuable. Give it to the sub, and then the sub will let you borrow a calculator, and then just give it back at the end of the period. I'm gonna pause for a second because I need to plug in my computer. Right, so I'm gonna ask the the sub to pause for a second so that anyone who needs a calculator can go ahead and get one. And then let's see what we can do with this. So you walk three meters. Uh, so problem number one. It says you walk three meters forward and five meters forward. Um, so what did you do? So since this is physics class or, or integrated chemistry physics, since we're, we're talking about physics right now, um, physics is the study of things that are physical. And so sometimes we're gonna draw a picture to kind of connect what the math we're doing to a physical reality. So the idea here is you walk three meters forward then five meters forward. What does that look like? Well, the way I draw, I draw, I call this like an arrow diagram. And I just say, okay, I walk three meters forward. Forward is usually point to the right. And I walk five meters forward. Notice I made the five meter long arrow longer than the three meter one arrow, uh, long arrow to kind of show that it's a longer distance. Now let's find the distance. What did we say distance was? So if you look back at your notes, right? Look back in your notebook, we said that distance, well, let me see if I can, you can see it here. You can see it better on your note, but it says that distance is the total amount traveled regardless of direction. So how far did I travel? I traveled three meters and then I traveled five meters. That's a total of eight meters. Now, the other thing I gotta be careful about is uh, when we're doing things in science class, um, all your numbers need units. The answer eight is our name valid answer because what is that? Eight what? Eight feet? Eight miles? Eight uh, kilometers? Eight elephants? Right? What does it mean? You always have to uh, put a label with it. And uh, by convention, the label for meters is M. So three meters and then five meters mean you traveled eight meters. What's the displacement? Well, let's again look at our notes of what the definition of displacement was. It said the total change of position or how far an object is from its starting point. Well, if the object started here and is now over here, how far is it from its starting point? It should be eight meters away. Is it okay that the distance and the displacement are the same? Yes, sometimes that happens. All right, let's try another one. You walk three meters forward and then two meters backward. I'm gonna draw an arrow saying I got three meters going forward and I'm gonna draw going two meters backwards. So see how I do that, I drew a forward arrow and then at the end of that, I drew a backward arrow. So what's the distance? Again, the distance is the total amount traveled regardless of direction. If you go three meters and then two meters, that's a total distance of five meters. But what's the displacement? 
displacement is how far an object is from its starting point. So if I started here and I went three meters this way and then I went two meters back, how far am I from where I started? Think about that for a second. You should end up with one meter. Okay, I'm gonna ask the sub to pause this video one more time. Um, and then um, while the video is paused, um, I want you to try three, four, and five. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to work on that now. And I'm gonna, let's see what we've got. Number three, you walk two meters forward, then three meters backward. Is this the same as the previous problem? Well, not really, because here I walk three meters forward, then two meters backward. This is two and three. What's the distance? The distance is still five. How far am I away from where I started? Well, you might say one meter. And if you said one meter, you would be almost correct. Except in physics, we have to uh, indicate um, which direction I went. Am I one meter in front of where I started? No, I'm actually one meter behind where I started. So we're gonna say that the answer is negative one. This was a three-step problem. So you went eight meters forward, seven meters backwards, seven meters, and then you went two meters forward. So the total distance should be eight plus seven plus two, which is 17 meters. Let's think about the displacement. If I go eight meters forward and seven meters back, what's the displacement so far? Well, eight minus seven is one. And then I go two more meters forward. So one plus two is three. The displacement is going to be three meters. All right. The last one is the one on here that's, that, uh, that might have been a little bit tricky. You walk three meters forward and fly four meters up. So let's draw that. We've got three meters forward and then we went four meters straight up. I guess you have wings or something. Now, what's the distance? Again, the distance is the total amount traveled. If I go three meters and four meters, how much did I travel? Well, three plus four is seven meters. That's the distance that I traveled. But what's the displacement? Displacement is how far I am from where I started. Am I seven meters from where I started? No, seven meters from where I started is over here somewhere. Am I four minus three? Am I one meter from where I started? And I don't think so. But the answer to this kind of uh, is hidden in our definition for displacement. Look back at your notes again for a second. The definition for displacement, the total change in position slash how far an object is from its starting point. So how far an object that's here now is from its starting point right there. So this, the, the displacement is kind of represented by that. Now, does this look familiar at all to you? Well, remember those warm up questions that we did on Thursday. There's a reason we did those warm up questions. This is, what do you call this? This is called a right triangle. If you've got a right triangle, how do you find the side of a right triangle? It's inside of a right triangle. This is called the Pythagorean theorem. You have done this before at some point in math, but if you've forgotten, I'm going to show you how to do it. The Pythagorean theorem is this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it says if you think of the two sides, these are called the two legs of the right triangles, a and b, you can use this equation to find c, which would be this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug those numbers in. And by the way, people ask me, how do I know which one's A and which one's B? It doesn't matter as long as A and B are both these legs of the triangle. So A, I'm gonna say three squared plus four squared equals C squared. And then you, this is where you need your calculator. Three squared, if you do it on your calculator, you should get nine. Four squared, four times four should be 16 equals c squared. Now what's nine plus 16? Nine plus 16 is 25. And then this is the important thing that's easy to forget, but 25 equals c squared. So what's c? 
The way you solve this is you have to take the square roots of both sides. So c squared, square root it. C, the square root of c squared is just c and the square root of 25 on your calculator. So remember the square root button. Let me see if I have a calculator here so that I can uh, show you. Um, I don't have one at my fingertips. What do I do here? So a square root button, my calculator probably looks different than yours, but my square root button is, let's see, it's right there. It's that thing that kind of looks like it. So can't see that, that square root there. So on my calculator, I'm gonna write square root, oops, square root, nope, let's see if it's wrong. Play that after that square root of 25. I know that's really hard to read, but you can do this on your calculator. And you should get that the square root of 25 is five. So what does that mean? That means that the displacement is five meters. So the last thing I gotta do is write the answer with units. All right. So that's the front page. Go ahead and turn over the back. There's no math for you to do on the back. I'm just gonna ask you a few questions and I just want you to think with your partner about um, in each of these cases. Can you think of a situation in which the displacement is zero, but the distance is not? Um, so see if you can come up with one for seven, eight, and, uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. Again, I'm gonna ask the sub to pause for a little bit to give you a chance. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna ask you to do here um, I'm, I'm just going to give you a hint if you got stuck. If you got stuck, I'm going to give you a hint and tell you that number nine is impossible. It is never it is not possible for the displacement to be larger than the distance. So if you said it's impossible, you are correct. Number nine. It's impossible because if you think about it, right, no matter which way you go, the longest your displacement can be is equal to your distance. So if I go in one direction, I go, let's say one meter and four meters, then my distance and displacement are both five. But if I go in any other direction, like if I do this, that displacement is gonna be less than five. And no matter whichever what other direction I go, it's gonna be less than five. So this one is impossible. Why? Because the maximum displacement you can have is equal to distance. In other words, if you like math, if you like thinking about this in mathematically, you could say this. You could say that the distance, or sorry, the displacement is always less than or equal to the distance. Right. So number nine was kind of a trick question, but I'm gonna ask you, I don't wanna give you the answers to uh, six, seven, and eight, because I want you to have, a, I just wanna see how you did with this. So I want you to, to talk to your partners, um, uh, see what you can do with these. And then I'm going to ask you uh, in a little bit to turn these in. Um, I, I, if you can't, like, I'm not grading this for if it's correct, but I want you to try all of these. I want you to have some drawings and some explanations here. Um, I'm gonna just let, have the sub pause it for a little bit in case you need some time to get set up and to finish up. All right. And then I'm gonna end by uh, going back to my agenda here for a second uh, and just remind you uh, that we're going to the library on Thursday to make sure you have all required materials with you every day going forward. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you to do two things uh, before you leave. One is give this worksheet to the sub, make sure your name is on it. 
uh, but give that give the worksheet to the sub. And the second thing is, I'm going to ask you to put your uh, your notebook on the bin or in the bin that's at the front of the room. So put your notebook at the front of the room, and then turn this piece of paper in. Those are the two things I'm asking you for you today, and um, I sh I hope to see you tomorrow. So have a good. One.